Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. I am doing a book paint over today, but I thought I would show you my little stack of books that I have ready to go. I decided to draw on it today as you guys have already seen in the title, but I ordered a lot of books that I thought I would find interesting and that we can probably comment down below if you want to see me paint on next. I tried to order Percy Jackson and The Lightning Thieves, but I totally ordered the wrong book. Please accept my apology for this. I know it's the wrong one and I know a lot of people are wanting to see the Percy Jackson book being paint over but this is the wrong one and I'm not going to use this one because I think it's just kind of like an add-on to the film which is just bizarre. So that one is out but I might order another one. It depends if people want that or not because I never read Percy Jackson so I don't really feel that inspired to paint over it but if people say it's a good book then maybe I'll give it a go. This is Silver Linings Playbook. I haven't read this yet. I haven't read any of these actually except for um, The Hate You Give. Mary Queen of Scots is another one that came out recently and I really like reading historical fiction so I thought I would enjoy reading this book. If you're new here I don't like movie covers and books so what I do is I read them and then I paint over them because I just like to make it more personal to me. I got the house with a clock in its walls because I saw the first half of this movie on holiday once and then I didn't see the rest and I was like hmm not really that bothered to see the rest but I think it has an intriguing concept so I'm interested in reading the book. The Hate You Give is a book that I gave five stars and I really enjoyed and I think it has it's a very strong book with a really distinctive voice. And then I have The Children Act, which a friend gave me and I haven't read and I haven't really heard of before, but I'm going to have a look into it. And yeah, if you guys wanna see that one next, I guess that's the next book I'm reading. So let me know which book you would like next. Today we are drawing on it. So these are your choices and let me know. So if you haven't heard of it, which you probably have. It's about this killer creature that is terrorizing children. And in the book, we get to know a group of children, mostly boys, and how they overcome this creature that is killing children and adults in, in the town where they live. And it's a great story. It's really all about overcoming evil, I would say, and facing your fears and just doing what's good. I think that is, the moral sense of the book overall. I think this book is like means a lot to me. I really enjoyed it. I love the films. I watched the first film and then I read the book and then I watched the second film. And I really enjoy the films as a separate entity. And the book is obviously very different because it's set in the 1950s and then further on when they become adults. But the films are set in the 1980s, the most recent films, I mean, that this cover's based on. With Bill Skarsgård playing Pennywise the Clown, I think he does an amazing job. He's a really good actor and it really got me, it got me spooked. So this is a really good book. If you guys haven't read it, it is, the only criticism I would give it is it is super long and there are some, a couple of unnecessary scenes in there for sure. Okay, so because this cover has a little bit of a weird, you probably can't see that very well, but there's some scraggly bent bits and it arrived like this, so I don't know what to do with that. So I thought I'd do is do something a little bit different with this one. So we're gonna use uh, paper and stick this down, but what I wanna do is fold it over and have sort of two covers. So you have a front cover and then you open it up and it reveals something. And that's what I've gotta figure out, but I think that that will work nicely and I just stick this down. And then I can probably use watercolor with this one because this is watercolor paper and Instead of it being difficult to paint on this smooth cover, I can use that. But this one, I think I just want to cover up this dent here and I think this will be cool because we can use some paper art stuff, maybe. So I think we'll just get down to it. So something that is different in the book that I wanted to show is that it is set in the 1950s and in the movie that this cover is based on, it's set in the 1980s and then onwards, obviously. So I wanted to reflect that in my style because if I'm doing a book paint over of a movie cover, then I want to reflect what's actually the content in the book rather than what I think it should be. So because of this, Stephen King describes Pennywise the Clown being a combination of Bozo the Clown, who was this popular TV clown in the 1950s, and Ronald McDonald. So I've looked at references of both of those things, and I came up with kind of a design that I'm going to be drawing 
on the front of this and I think it will just be a little bit like quirky and strange because it's not outwardly creepy but it's something I hope that there will be something a bit off about it and I think that will be cool and that kind of captures the vibe of Pennywise for me anyway that he's just kind of this old clown looks a bit friendly but you know he's gonna eat yeah so and then on the inside what I want to do is paint the turtle which is a big thing in this book I don't want to spoil too much so if you don't know what the turtle is then you should read it but the turtle is kind of a good a good symbol so I want to draw a turtle symbol and and maybe sort of play on that side of the story where they do the ritual of chud and have some kind of graphic style images in the back and have the kids just stood around and i think that's going to be my inside so it's going to be like bad to good kind of thing and i think that will work and i hope that that looks good in case you guys didn't guess this book was a five star for me i love this story i think it started out really strong and there are parts where it does drag a little bit but I think you're going to get that when a book is over a thousand pages long. So I was using my Artex watercolour pens for this and dipping them into water. And I hadn't done that before in a video. Lots of people said that that's how you use them properly. And I thought I would just give that a whirl and I really enjoyed using them that way. So I think in the future I will definitely be doing that again. I wanted to make sure that Pennywise had big orange pom-poms. Because in the book that is mentioned a lot that they see these orange pom-poms just in ominous places. And they come across them them in different areas and that means that Pennywise is watching them or he's around so I wanted to make sure that I included that in my final design of Pennywise. Inside the book you can see the turtle and then the children. I didn't want to do the adult version, I had an idea of having the adults um, mirrored in the lake somehow um, looking at themselves but I didn't think that would really work. I really like the children's story, I think that is the main heart of the whole book overall. For me it is anyway, maybe it isn't for everyone, but I really enjoyed painting this and I had to include some balloons. In the new movie, the balloons are always red and I think in the book they're mentioned as being just bright different colours, so I wanted to emulate that again. I also included one of the fears which is the bird and if you've read the book then you know that the bird is one of the kids fears and it's pretty creepy but maybe it's not as creepy as actually Pennywise. Pennywise is the scariest thing for sure in the book so there are bits in the movie in the book where you are cringing a lot so I think I just wanted to have like a little bit of a suggestion of things in this in this cover so when you open it up you see the kids there are all these balloons and different things around them and i really like the way that it turned out i think i could have um worked on the kids a bit more given them a bit more personality of differences and stuff but i kind of like this style it's kind of quirky and i think it's very illustrative and i enjoyed doing it so i think that's the whole point right I tried to use a similar color scheme and have you guys noticed are you proud of me i didn't use any purple or if i did it used it very minusculely but I didn't use any purple or pinks and stuff and I hope you guys are proud of me because I tried to focus on using more greens and reds in this piece so I think it works I think the color scheme is pretty good for this so I'm glad that I stuck to my guns on that one and we have a different color scheme of something for once hooray and I'm not really sure what else to say this is kind of all my thoughts on this process and the book itself which is a five star read for me so I uh, yeah that's, that's it, really. That is what I'm going to call my final look of this book, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this take on my movie cover of it. I'm really pleased with the cover, I really like the Pennywise on the front and some bits that I really like are the turtle and the bird. The bird is kind of one of the scary things that Pennywise turns into to scare Mike, who I think is probably one of the uh, the, the true uh, 
heroes of the story to be fair because he's the one who stays behind in Derry. But yeah, that's my cover and I was gonna put some maybe some glow-in-the-dark stuff but I didn't really want to mess with it anymore because I was liking how it turned out. It's definitely done in my style which is probably not to everybody's taste so I might get a few comments there but I really like it. I like that it's a bit childlike and then actually it's horror. I like that kind of juxtaposition of horror and cutesy so I think it works especially in the case of this where it is a killer clown so you know it's supposed to be about something that catches you off guard so what do you guys think do you think I did a good job let me know what book you would like to see next actually before I leave of course we've got to announce the winner of the Artex competition so if you entered that competition you were in with a chance to win all of these pens that I've used here today and a Paul Rubin sketchbook and the squash. So, so the winners of those competition is Artex pick one winner and I've picked another. The first winner is Al C. Al C. And my winner is Natasha T. Cedar. So if you are those people, then message me on Instagram and we will be in contact with you to send your prizes. And I'm sorry that. A lot of you obviously couldn't win the competition but thank you all so much for entering and I wish I could give you all these art supplies but I hope that you're happy that you had a chance to win and maybe we'll run another competition in the future so keep your eyes out. Thanks again guys and I will see you next time. Bye!